the importance of emulation and simulation can be best understood if we were to look at the services which we want to migrate to ngn or the ngn based services which we want to import to the legacy network this is actually the change of perspective so we'll look at the migration or evolution from the emul emulation and simulation perspective we consider some options and uh, those options are going to uh, necessitate the adaptation of some functionality and we'd look at the architecture that realizes so as for the implementation the classical value added services in pstn and particularly the isdn such as the caller line identification and its presentation or its um, um restriction then call waiting forwarding barring etc are the features which we want to be to see in ngn as well at the same time the ngn services could be provided to existing pstn and istn services so as far as the emulation is concerned it is a step that encourages existing services and capabilities to be provided to pstn istn based migration to ngn environment this involves ip enablement such ip enablement is implemented by the call server but if we are looking at the ngn services which we want to provide to pstn and istn but not all classical services may be opted for we would go big time and we'll replace the core uh transit exchanges with the ims uh multimedia system in order to realize the simulation or the emulation emulation being more um rudimentary or primitive and simulation being more radical the functions which need to be adapted are usually modified using the adaptation functions on both the sides number 1 on one side that is on the non ip side the ip multimedia services are provided for instance using uh, session initiation protocol and then on the other side that is towards the uh, um uh primitive side we use simulation and emulation so what we are doing is the adaptation is taking place on the user equipment side or the last mile side and uh, adaptation is equally taking place on the core side for adapting the uh um services and the functions using simulation the user is going to receive regular ngn services like a typical ngn user which is uh, using ngn compliant uh, or ngn compatible user interface for that uh, we need to install residential gateways in uh, customer premises so we we would require to have some kind of specific a uh, cpe customer premises equipment as for emulation is concerned since we are interested in ensuring that the legacy services are provided the user receives uh, standard services and some additional ngn services here the access gateway 
implements the responsibility of adaptation functions and it is on the network side so it means on the core side the ngn providers premises are going to host the access gateway which will make sure that ngn becomes interoperable um, with the um, classical network so let's look at the architecture for simulation and emulation together the complete architecture of pst and istn integration into the ngn either using simulation or emulation let's look at this figure here we have ngn carriers a and b but a is the reference architecture carrier that we are going to look at to have a better understanding of emulation and simulation as for the non ngn ip networks are concerned or the traditional pstns are concerned we look at those only briefly let's start from uh, the left hand side on the leftmost side we have user equipment such as a telephone a typical terminal for uh, making and receiving calls using adf1 it is going to be simulating the ngn to the user equipment of course the user to network interface as defined in the ngn architecture would be the bridge between the adf1 and the user equipment adf2 that implements emulation is going to allow the user equipment to use ngn services or have access to the ngn architecture both of these telephones or the primitive terminal equipment are using the legacy interface it means from their perspective there isn't much change but the adfs through adaptation are making sure that this translation to and from ngn takes place smoothly so uh, the user to network interface for simulation is implementing the voip and sip based services you can see at the top we have ip based user equipment that is uh, very smoothly implementing the user to network interface by directly using voip and sip let's look at the non ngn based ip network here also using voip and sip is possible but having access to the complete suite of services in ngn is not possible and then we have the public land mobile network below here we have circuit switched voice and uh, integrated services user part which is going to be connected to the ngn by the network to network interface so it means the nni allows different networks to be interoperable but if we really want the devices to become compatible with ngn we need to emulate or simulate the services as in ngn 